<laughs> I might not be able to match his energy, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> um, so it, like Chris mentioned, starting off, um, I'm a graduate of SMSU. I grew up in the area, came to school here. I had the privilege of wrestling here and I got to stay around here. So um, I did not have to go very far, but um, I am a 2018 graduate. I am, got an emphasis, I don't know if they've changed or not, allied health and corporate human performance. I went two different routes. Um, background, I had no idea what I wanted to do in school. I just knew that I wanted to go to school. Um, so um, pretty much how this is gonna work is I'm gonna tell you a background of Health Source. that's where I work. Tell you back on what I do, a couple different cool things that I get to use, and then um, we get to have a little bit of interaction because sitting here and just talking to you for 20 minutes is not very fun. Um, but so I wish this worked. But so Health Source Chiropractic is actually a franchise. Um, we are the leading franchise in any chiropractic facility. We have just a stat for you. Um, right now, there's over 300 clinic locations. I think they're up to like 382 as of today. They're adding locations left and right um, across 41 states and Canada. So um, these are all peers that we get to interact with, right? We have our central network. It's not like, oh, it's our office and their office. Um, of those 300 clinic locations, we have seen over 8 million patient visits nationwide. So treated 8 million different people. So that is just a little bit about health source. I am a rehab specialist. I did not go on to school after SMSU. I got my four-year degree and said, okay, now what? Right? I got this piece of paper. Bills are coming. How do I make money? <laughs> no. So I did not do your traditional route of going to school and then finding my dream job, dream job right away. I went and worked in a warehouse for a year. And then this job showed up. Um, just kind of quick raise your hands. Everyone here knows exactly what they want to do when they graduate, right? Yeah. Awesome. If you do, awesome. I had no idea. So um, Dr. Rob Hennon, he is a local guy as well. Um, he had a position that opened up. And I've been there for just over four and a half years. So yeah. hurts to say. <laughs> <laughs> so as a rehab specialist, I get really confused with, you know, are you a physical therapist? I am not a physical therapist. I, I like to um, give credit where credit is due. I did not do the extra schooling. I do not have that, um, that accreditation or that certificate. I'm not an occupational therapist. I'm not a personal trainer. I'm not a strength coach. I essentially get to put all of those together, make my own little profession and roll with it which is awesome. So I, um, I focus on corrective movements in our setting, in a chiropractic setting compared um, hand in hand with chiropractic treatments to um, get people feeling better and keeping them feeling better. So as a rehab specialist, kind of taking you through um, my day to day duties, it changes. I've been there long enough. I'm also in charge of all the marketing. That's where I know some of the core classes that you guys get with exercise science drastically helped me with figuring out how to work a computer, um, basic marketing stuff that you should probably be better at. But um, so all of our social medias, you know, um, so I typically see now, compared to the last time I got to speak, um, anywhere from 30 to 35 patients in our rehab room per day. Um, wow. Which has That's more than last year about tripled yeah. from when I started, I think I saw four to six people a day. And we're talking like 45 minutes per person, 45 minutes to an hour. So uh, very rarely is there one person. We're, we're bouncing around. I have, um, we have one doc right now, we are looking for an associate doctor. And then um, there is me as a full-time rehab specialist. And then we have a um, part-time student um, rehab specialist that um, does well. So um, there's three phases of care that we typically look through in our office, right? We kind of break it down into um, our inflammatory phase. Okay, people come in, they're in pain, something doesn't move right, they're like, fix me. 
I call it my stretching phase. I like to dumb things down because big words scare me. Uh, <laughs> second thing is our repair phase, right? As we get the pain under control, figure out why we have pain. How can we fix that pain, right? I call that my strengthening phase, right? And then our third phase of care is our remodel, right? So with that, I just said right like 10 times in a row. Um, with our remodel, or I call it my stabilization phase, that's where we're addressing and preventing future injuries. So um, it, it's really, really rewarding being able to see someone that comes in from all walks of life. We've seen athletes. I think my youngest patient right now that I'm dealing with is like seven. My oldest patient right now is 91. And I would put this 91 year old up against most of this room. <laughs> uh, she keeps me on my side, which is cool. Um, so going into that, uh, with the first phase, you're looking at muscle work, right? You're figuring out how muscles are working. Are they working correctly? Are they firing correctly? And then is there an imbalance? Then we're looking at making sure that as those joints are being aligned, those muscles are firing how we want them to. We're addressing past injuries, disc stuff, compensations, and then uh, getting people to move. So one of my favorite things in the office is I get to go pretty fast. I get to throw random information at people and they look at me and go, huh? So anyone can anyone tell me the difference between mobility and stability? You don't want to try and take a guess. There's no wrong answers. Sit here and wait and quiet. Yeah. Uh, mobility is like how you move and stability is like how well you're able to move yeah you're right on. so this is where i get to like take them big scary words right and dumb them down mobility we want to get you moving right how's someone moving are they moving bad are they moving good are they moving too much in certain areas and then stability how are they controlling their bodies while they're moving right we can get people moving with chiropractic adjustments and get you feel better, but if you cannot control that, you're going to get hurt again. You're not going to feel very good for a very long time, right? So that's the stability aspect of our care. Um, so moving on from that, you know, there's a few different cool tools that I like to um, say. Uh, Chris was just telling me you guys got some more new technology that wasn't here when I was here. I'm super geeking out about that. But um, one of the tools that we are are very proud of and, and able to have here in this area is what we call a non-surgical spinal decompression table. We call it a decomp table, right? Um, so the, this tool, is anyone familiar with an inversion table? And they like hang upside down on the gravity boots? I have boots? one at home. Okay, I so love it. when used correctly, it's an amazing tool. Essentially the purpose of it is being able to take the pressure off of the discs of everyday life. I dumb it down into brake pads. Right, we all have brake pads on our vehicles, hopefully. Right, some more than others, but it helps us stop. Well, as we use those brake pads, they wear out and we get new ones. We can't do that with our bodies. So, gravity, life, sports, sitting in class looking like or not, right? Things like that <laughs> put pressure on those discs and we can't restore it. So, this tool allows us to take the pressure off the discs in between the joints and the nerves that flow in between our spine, right? And that the research behind it is so that we can um, take the pressure off of that, allow nutrient-rich fluids to flow back into those discs and allows for healing. So plenty of different uses uh, that, you know, we see a lot of chronic neck and back pain headaches. We're seeing way more headaches than we would like to see. One, no one is probably more headaches with, and I say our generation because I'm young too. Bad posture and constantly looking down at phone. Yeah, we all have these things that we walk around like zombies doing this, right? <laughs> Sitting on our computers, um, and I'm I'm not free from this either. But this is becoming a more and more um, issue or prevalent issue, as especially with the pandemic, um, changed the way that we learn. Right, and um, you're seeing really, really young individuals. Like, uh, 
uh, unfortunately are starting to get straightening of cervical spines or even reverse curves. Um, and the reason why this is so passionate to us is there's tons of studies. You can look them up. You get a really good library here, but I'm sure Chris can lead you down some good rabbit holes. But this is where a lot of depression, anxiety, sleep disorders, all these different things are stemming from, right? Um, if the brain can't work how the brain should work, something has to give, right? So that's one of the tools that we get to use. Um, I really wish I could have brought it with me here today, but we uh, we need it at the office. It's the newest addition to our offices. It is a class four laser. Um, anyone not know what red light therapy is? Essentially, it's like a red light that they make you feel good, all right? Just a dumb down version. Um, but this is that, I like to say kind of on steroids. So if you want to feel really small and smart when you go out of this room and go talk to like teammates, classmates, friends, roommates, it is called cellular photobiomodulation therapy. Oh, that's a good word. Words. You know how long I practiced that? <laughs> um, so cellular photobiomodulation. Essentially what that is, or we call it laser. It's low level laser therapy. Um, is the use of near infrared light wavelengths to stimulate a process called photobiomodulation, right? That process, photons enter the tissues of your cells or your body, which interact with the cytochrome C complex and the mitochondria. Okay, a lot of big words there. You're impressive. I don't like big words, I can read. <laughs> I don't like big words, I hope. Big words, right? Um, a lot of people probably had biology in high school, hopefully, or they're in it now. Does anyone know what the mitochondria does? No. <laughs> the powerhouse of the cell. Powerhouse of the cell, right? We all learn that way. So essentially, you, you hit the nail right on the head, right? With this near-infrared light wavelength, um, infrared being, we, we cannot see it, right? Um, we're targeting that mitochondria. But that mitochondria, and I'm going to keep digging down the rabbit hole because I'm really good at it. Why is it the, mito or the powerhouse of the cell? Everybody's looking at Lauren. Oh, Anybody can answer yeah, these yeah, questions. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, sure. Does it produces ATP, which gives us energy? Okay. And why is ATP important to us? Yeah. Okay. Pretty simple, right? But you have adenosine triphosphate and adenosine diphosphate, right? That's our energy. That's how our body heals. That's how we function. Well, research has proven that with correct wavelengths, these infrared wavelengths instead of sound wavelengths, we're able to stimulate or overstimulate the mitochondria of the cell, which produces a rapid production of ATP, right? Helps us feel better and faster. So it's in layman's terms, it's my magic wand, the fix we're all looking for, quick fix, right? Um, so we've seen amazing results in our office from anything from ankle springs to old injuries, sports injuries, the shoulder, postural injuries, headaches, um, tissues that don't move. And this is where I get to brag to Chris because I haven't seen her in a while. Ranges of motion. Dang. Um, through nice. different things. I, I'm geeking out because this is a tool. Um, have pretty good history with Chris and just a bunch of injuries from wrestling and beating up on my body. And, uh, she did the best that she could at work on me, but uh, it's like a lost cause. Um, <laughs> setting up for failure. But this has been a game changer in, in my life and making sure that I can do what I want to do. So those are two different tools. We have all sorts of different things. Kinesiology tape, rock taping. We do support tapes. We do a couple different things with that. We do cupping, if anyone's ever heard of that. Um, a little bit of grass and ultrasound, electrical stimulation, um, you name it. I get to play with it. So um, now um, here's where a little bit of role playing goes into play. Um, and, and then again, like Chris said, if you have questions, I keep pointing, looking at people. Just yell at me. Okay. Um, I, I like to just talk about myself for a while. But um, so on our first visit, we get someone in the office, right? They tell us, well, something hurts. Okay, we need to figure out what hurts, all right? So you get to do all the fun paperwork, computer work. And then in our office, what sets us apart from different care in the area, not that they're doing it wrong, we just look at things a little different. We do a structural test, right? What's the integrity of your spine? We do a neurological test. How is your spine your body responding to your brain and then we do a functional test Have you done any fms with the, um uh, if they have kinesiology they are introduced to fms okay mm -hmm. cool so 
We do not do FMS testing. I'm still pumping the prime to make that our standard, but we do our own functional test. So what I'm looking for the, with this is the three things that we're looking for in our room, right? Repair, remodel, restructure, or um, stretching, strengthening, and stabilizing. So um, kind of what I had planned here, I didn't talk about a couple different things to do it, or is there anyone that wants me to pick apart how their body's moving? Anyone? You just made sure. it. I yeah. might as well. <laughs> so okay, this Scared is now. what I do with the pencil and then I get to speak to Dr. Oz and say, hey, I'm seeing this. Are you seeing that? And he goes, well, I see subluxations at this region. That makes a lot of sense. And we pair it with our x-rays and go, oh, that makes a lot of sense. And then that's how we can help. I'm sorry, what's your name? Kenzie. Kenzie, awesome. Um, just for time, I'm not going to ask you to take your shoes off. I okay. typically ask individuals to take their shoes off to structure it or keep it uniform. So Kenzie, what I'm going to ask you is I'm going to ask you to stand out here. We get the face everyone out here. We're going to kind of pick apart your posture. I always like to say we're, there's no right and wrong in the body. No good and bad. No pass, no fail. Right? There's efficiency. Our body works in different ways. So I'm going to get off to the side so that everyone else can see what you're doing. So stay in your First thing that I'm going to ask you to do, Kenzie, do the best that you can. If there's any pain, please do not push through this. Okay. I'm going to ask you to stand on your left leg, bringing your right leg up to 90 degrees and hold it. Okay. And back down. Is there any pain there? Okay. And we can switch to the other leg for me, please. And back down. How do you guys think she did? Look pretty good, right? She didn't fall over. She didn't cry out, screaming from pain. Now, this is me being trained in this. I saw that she had a pretty good weight shift under her right leg, the left hip height, and there was a little bit of rotation. She probably felt pressure. I've been wrong before, and I'm going to be wrong again. So hopefully, um, I'm wrong. But um, that's that's where I typically tell them that, right? And um, the next thing that I would do is what we call star balance test. It's going to be very similar to the FMS Y test. Y balance. Y yeah. balance yep. test. Yep. So what I'm going to ask you here, Kenzie, is I'm going to show you the movement, then I'm going to ask you to do it. Okay. Um, I'm just have you wait a moment. When you're doing this, you're going to stand on your left leg, and you're going to slide your right leg forward, bringing it back. We're going to go 45 degrees forward, back, the side, 45 backwards, and straight backwards. All five directions without trying to touch the ground. I will help you remember those. Okay. And I'm going to show you standing on your left leg, bringing your right leg straight forward, 45 degrees forward, to the side towards me. 45 backwards and straight backwards. Any pain with that at all? No, my hips are comfy though. Okay, good job. Okay, there's half of a star, so we get to pick on the other half for me, please. Oh, God. Slide that left leg forward, 45 forward, side, 45 backwards, straight backwards. And your locks are that. Bro, did anything stick out to anybody? What do you like? Forward a bit, maybe. Okay. I wonder if she was just standing. <laughs> and I, you're not the only person with this gun. I do this, the <laughs> but right, your right hip opened up again. Mm -hmm. That's what you feel a little bit more in your left hip. Okay. So I'm not going to ask you to squat. Those are uh, just a basic body weight squat or an overhead squat would be the third thing that I'm looking for lower body. So the next thing is we're going to pick on your upper body. And when you're ready, I'm going to ask you to bring your arms all the way up front for me, please. We're going to bring your arms all the way up to the side. Back is front. Any pain there at all? No. What if we bring our hands all the way up to the top of our head? Back down. Any pain there? And last one, bring your elbows back. We're going to try to make a goal post. Capital letter T. And relax. Any pain there? Okay. How do you think that went? Not great. What didn't go great about it? Um, I felt like this arm was going further than this one was. Okay. So you actually did better than what I anticipated. I would give your shoulder abduction a pass. I would give your internal rotation a pass. Your external rotation, your left trap kicks in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And your shoulder flexion is no basic. If they've had knees, depends. Okay. Sorry, yep. I'm throwing them <laughs> again. It's the kid that said he doesn't like the big words, just throwing them out. Um, your head shifted for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, so... That's like three times the length that I go through when, when I'm doing it. So it's overwhelming. 
and, and Kenji gets it done for me. Please. Thank you for being a volunteer. So that's that's really why we pick on tissues like this because we want to figure out can we help? If we can help, how can we help? And how we, how we can get you feeling better and keep you feeling better, right? Stabilizing, not just crack me a ghost stick and out the door I go, right? It's not wrong, it's just not how we do things. So I have just a couple more things for you guys and then um, I'm gonna open it up for some questions. Uh, you guys didn't call your pregnant quiz today. This is why I wish I had my, um, my PowerPoint together. So with our body, we talked about, and, and that's okay. It's truly just a diagram of yep. the human body and I can use me as a dummy. We went over mobility versus stability, right? Our body does one of two things. We want mobility from a joint. We want stability from a joint, right? So from here, I have a diagram of a couple different things um, with our upper neck, right? Top of our neck, right through here. Anyone think that this is a mobile joint? Did we have mobility in our neck? Yeah? Okay. Does anyone think it's a stability joint? Their neck be stable. Yeah, that's where it gets fun, right? It's not both. It does both things, right? And then we have the lower part of our neck. And that's where I kind of led you into failing either way. But our neck, our upper neck, we want mobility. All right, we want to be able to turn our head. Do different things, right? Whereas we want stability into our shoulders. And then the next thing that we got to pick on is our shoulders, right? Not our shoulder blades, our shoulders. Do I want mobility in my shoulder or do I want stability? Mobility. Why? Yeah, we're the motions. yeah we want to move our shoulders, right? Cool. Now going to the shoulder blade behind the shoulder, do we want mobility or stability? Come on, a couple of these are easy, a couple of these are hard. Stability. stability, why? And then, like, you know, your shoulder blade are like, kind of like those muscles and tendons go supporting around it, stay okay. in place, I guess. It seems like mobility, though, because it helps with. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Stability sure. like, Everyone heard what he said? He thinks stability, because we want to be able to stable through the shoulder joint. And Kenzie thinks mobility, because we want to be able to move our shoulders. Anyone else got any opinions? It's stability. So you got that right. We want mobility in a ball and socket joint. We want stability in the scapula so that we can get retraction and extension. Right? When we flip flop these two, does anyone know what happens? Compensations. Right? It's not like we take the tire off your car and you can't go in there. Right? We're just running on a flat tire or a low tire. So then we go down into our mid to our low back, our trunk. We want trunk mobility or stability. I heard it. Stability. Stability. Yeah. We've heard trunk stability, right? Want to keep ourselves upright. And then continue to go through hips, ball and socket joint. Mobility, right? Knees, ankles, feet, toes, right? Works its way down. Did anyone catch the pattern? It stacks, right? Got mobility, stability, mobility, stability, works its way all the way down. So what we're looking for with that FMS testing and our structural, and I have a diagram with all those um, if you want to see it, but that's what we're looking for. I'm looking and I'm trained to look for a joint that is moving when we want it to be stable and vice versa. And that's where my role as a rehab specialist comes into play and being able to assign different movements that Dr. Rob and I agree on that help flip flop those roles so that we can prevent injuries, right? And ultimately we got one spine. Um, it's, there's certain things that technology is amazing, but we only got one spine. So when we have those different things that unfortunately some people have to deal with, that mobility and that stability gets compromised, and eventually down the line, something else happens, right? 
So that's pretty much everything I had in a nutshell. I wanted to explain what I did, a couple different things that I played with, um, and then do some interactions pretty quick. Um, does anyone have any questions? Otherwise, it's going to be an awkward, like, five minutes. How do you, like, remember all this stuff? Like, is it because you just whipped up that presentation, or you got, like, a good memory because you went to school for four years? Great question. <laughs> And this is going to be probably one of, the, huh? one of those fun answers that probably the professor gives you. It depends. Yeah, that's that's not what you wanted to hear. Cool. Um, so in our office, and um, a little bird has told me that uh, a couple of tricks oh. that we use is being implemented into your education. We do scripting, role playing, right? Interactions, especially with this pandemic, it changes the world that we live in. And people don't know how to talk to people. And I will say what you said, the three things. What were she they? looks at me and this is where my fun part is. is yeah. To, anyone remember the first one? Three things that I'm looking for. Or three stages of care that we're bringing somebody through. Strengthening was one. Okay, you got one of them. And it's probably too easy because I did my cheeks, but stretching, all right? Want to make sure that we're able to move. Strengthening, making sure that we can move. And stabilizing, making sure we can control through movement. It's not that hard. So we just talked about this on Tuesday in exercise prescription. Cool. That's so why when you said that, I'm like, oh, that's so awesome. But And, and to not to shy away from your question, but this is the huge perk of HealthSource being a franchise. I meet twice annually with our region. There's three different regions across the whole nation, and we meet once, biennial, whatever. We meet once annually with the entire health source nation. They call it oh, cliche, not a tribe or anything. But um, we we travel across the country, sit through four days of fourteen hours of lectures, trainings, learnings every Tuesday. We are not open to treating patients on Tuesday mornings. We spend three to four hours every week, Tuesday mornings, learning how to talk to each other, learning what we can do better, learning how we can do something better. We will ultimately help people feel better. So it's, it's education. It's, it's, there are things that were taught at the time were correct when I was in school, like I said, 18, not very long ago, that are not taught anymore. That things have changed. So, good question. That answer that for you? Yes. How did you learn how to tie your shoe? Practiced it. Sure. I did. Someone taught you. And then. I don't remember. My memory's off. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't but, remember. I mean, this is where um, I like to dump things down, right? But right away, someone helps tie our shoes. We have Velcro, right? Like little kid booties that slip on once, right? And you're like, okay, time to tie your own shoes. You're 18. No, but. They teach us. We'll learn how to do it and before you know it, it's second nature. I don't know. remember being taught. I just know I know how to do it. Sure. So that's why you have to do a lot of repetition. Oh, yeah. So in our major, you know, you're here for four years, but we do we start so like in kinesiology, that's the basics. And now we get to the point where I have the seniors. And so when they train clients, they have to use their kinesiology. So I want to do this exercise. What plane of motion? What axis of rotation? What major muscle groups are we using? I didn't make you do that, but I do it now because okay. I don't remember it as well as I used to. So it's repetition and, and lifelong learning. So that really points to when you're looking for a job. It's not just how much money do I make? How many vacation days do I get? That's a huge perk. That continuing education, that's huge. I'm going to tell you right now, if yeah. you're looking to get rich, sit on a beach and drink mojitos at 35 in this profession you might look somewhere else are you gonna can you live comfortably absolutely it's not a profession that you're gonna be you know there's there's opportunities that you can progress outside your means absolutely but you're not gonna make the big bucks so why do you do what you do because I know I can I know you love what you do why do you do what you do then the the reason why do we do that that's that's our like yeah, certified trademark, do what you love. So, um, but the reason why I had such a passion for this is that in college, I had five surgeries in my yes. wrestling career. 
I got to wrestle three out of my four years. The last time I competed against an compo- uh, opponent that wasn't from my team was my freshman year of college. I have had seven surgeries. Um, so if you can break it or air it, I've done a lot of it. Um, and I found a true passion in being able to take someone at their lowest low and then seeing someone that crawls into our office and then having them come give me a hug because they just did their first round of golf with the grandkids. Or that athlete that has sat out for two weeks with a sprained ankle and we're looking at things just a little different, then you're not doing things wrong, but let's try to tweak it this way. And they're back to, you know, celebrating winning the state championship. Um, that's why I do, or that's why I do it. I love it. I play every day. I don't go to work. I play all day long. <laughs> and talk a little bit about your work-life balance, because I know a lot of people, you know, when you think healthcare, um, sometimes you think long hours or that kind of thing, but it really, the, the guest speakers we've had so far really talk about, you. it's a, it's a, you can, you can have a good work-life balance. It's a family affair. Dr. Rob was here Monday night, and he said a lot of times he's got a couple of his kids in the office, and they're playing chiropractor and everything. But I follow you on Instagram, and I know you have a lot of fun. So how how does that work for you, for your work-life balance? Um, I'm not going to sit here and say I don't work, but there are definitely people that work a lot harder than me. Um, I work four days a week. Very rarely do I work on Friday. I could work as a Friday as an office and probably make more money or treat more people. But that work-life balance is important to us. Um, Tuesday mornings, we do our trainings. So I'm at work at 6.30 in the morning. I'm there about a half hour early than when we um, when we open up the office because I do all of the programming. I'm very blessed to be able to have that responsibility um, where Dr. Rob trusts any exercise, variance, anything that we do with a patient, I do it. No questions asked. So I get to make sure that that's all ducks are in a row, especially since there's two of us now um, uh, with the memory thing. A lot of times I just have this big medieval plan up here and I don't do the best at putting it into words. And then it's like, what are we doing? Um, but then I have, we, we do what we call shifts, right? So we treat patients from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then I have a lunch break from 10 a.m. to noon. So I have a two hour lunch break every day. Now there's the notes on the back end. There's, you know, the community community engagement events. I'm in charge of all the marketing. So it's business to business marketing. We're not speaking with people, we're not meeting people, um, setting up different things. And then we treat patients from noon to 5.30. It's not bad. It, it really isn't. I'm super blessed where my boss and I are on the same page. And this is not the case. It doesn't have to be anymore. Um, a lot of times, you know, you kind of have to earn your way into the respect and and uh, like, oh, take your lashes and then you can start to slack off a little bit. We do not bring work home. I will sit in our office until eight o'clock at night. That's a rule that I have. I don't bring work home. I won't do any work at home. My notes are done every time I leave that door. Um, Thing that you know just little cues that I learned along the way of making me better at what I do none of the stuff in my life matters when I'm helping that patient in front of me so I had a bad day I didn't sleep when I threw a rock in my windshield was shattered yeah that sucks right we can all miss the elusive funk yeah yeah you, there you go <laughs> <laughs> um but th- that's the fun part about it is it doesn't matter um what going in in your life you can still help impact someone else it's super rewarding it is help people any other questions what all of it torn oh, gosh. <laughs> all of it <laughs> i'm 27 years old so i'm not very old um probably be easier to tell you what i haven't um i my first injury was I was in high school and I tore my labrum in my shoulder. Pretty common injury with anyone volleyball, basketball, high impact. Got that 
prepared. I had to drop football and I've torn my shoulder two more times since then. Um, I've torn my right shoulder the same way, but I haven't done anything to repair it. Um, I have shattered my left ankle. I have torn my ACL, my MCL, my PCL, my medial meniscus, um, and then my patellar tendon in my left knee. I have no ACL in my right knee. I've broken 19 bones. It's not like, yeah, this, no, like, no. this is not like they do, do the route that I did. You don't have to get hurt to want to hurt, <laughs> help people from being hurt. Um, it took me a couple injuries to realize that. All right. You learn. You learn. Any other questions? Sure. So, like, does somebody, like, most commonly, does somebody usually, like, get adjusted by a chiropractor, then come to you after? Or, like, well, how does that work if somebody's going to the chiropractor? Really the so, typically, that first visit, we do not adjust the patient. Nine out of ten of our patients we do imaging on to make sure that it's safe to do so. We've seen everything from, um, I shared this last time, but with my body, I, I even did some PT with Chris because we couldn't figure out why my low back was locking up. I have what you call a compression fracture in my L4, my L5 vertebra. So sometime in my life, I hit my butt really hard and broke my back. Well, because of imaging, we now know that. So me laying on a foam roller probably wasn't a very smart idea. Um, so we do the imaging. We make sure it's safe to adjust people. And everyone's back react, or everyone's body reacts really differently. And that's where we, we tweak things to make sure that someone's flow time-wise and their body is moving well. Um, uh, we, Dr. Rob and I kind of bounce things back and forth, but we say to, to get different results, you have to do things differently, right? So that, that's one thing that uh, we, we're always, we're always changing things up. We're always trying to, does that answer your question? But uh, yeah, it, it really, really depends. It's not the answer I like to give, but um, it, it's really depends. Any other questions? School, life, work, monies. No one likes to talk about money, right? I get paid after school. I got all the debt. Have you treated someone with scoliosis? I treat. I could confidently say about daily we deal with individuals with scoliosis. You had like a really bad one. From some of the things, and obviously there's insurance means or anything, but. Yeah. Um, I've only been working here for four years. Uh, some of the things that in that short time that we've been able to see and that I've been able to see is unreal. We have helped three patients um, early diagnose cancer, which is super scary with imaging. We actually just had a patient that is one of, gotta be careful with him. Um, in Europe, there's less than 100 cases that have ever been um, ever been diagnosed or found of a form of infection. And because of some of the testing that we did, we went in and out, refer out, refer them out, and probably saved their life. Um, but I can count on, off the top of my head, at least three patients that Excellent. we have helped save their life. Okay. Yeah, we see some, I mean, you think of chiropractor, and I, there's a lot of things that chiropractors do that I'm like, oh, I don't believe in. And even my boss, but there's a lot of things that we we can help kind of find and cool things. What is something that you could tell me that would help me make the best use of time at SMSU? Oh, that's good. I'm just gonna ask that one. I'm so glad somebody asked that. Something I can tell you to make the best use of your time. Um. It's going to be cliche. Figure out your why. Why are you here? Are you here for your friends? Are you here for a sport? Are you here because you want to learn? Are you here because a bunch of teachers have told you you needed to go to school and this is one of the closest, cheapest, most no sense? Are you here because there's something that the school offers you that uh, you can take away from? Is that answer? Kind of a runaround answer, isn't it? Or, um, I lived 12 miles away from here growing up. 
I went home one day, my freshman year of college. My mother was not very impressed. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I love the then going there. It's holidays, birthdays. I said I saw them, right? Like you gotta come to Marshall to get groceries and stuff. <laughs> Like, leave me alone. Anything else? I will right. leave you with this guy. Yeah. So, um, try and shadow somebody. If you think you know what you're doing, we are always open, whether it's a day, whether it's an internship, whether it's a job opportunity. Um, we are always looking and, you know, whether it's chiropractic, PT, OT, go see what someone's doing. It's not just our office. Anyone of us. This area, more than willing to have you follow me. It's true. Do you think you were just unlucky with your injuries, but knowing what you know now, do you think you just like like wrestled like dangerously? Like I think I was less? uninformed <laughs> and underprepared, and then I'm a little hard headed and just polished through some things that probably should have. Some of that might have been your upbringing. <laughs> Where, I mean, where you wrestled in high school? I'm from Vinyota, if anyone knows that town. If there's any local people that try to target on my wrestler. Um, so, yeah, I grew up with a coach that hard stuff doesn't break. And, yeah. And like Landon said, take advantage. Like, like he said, shadow, get opportunities. Dr. Rob, his boss, was here Monday night and and then he emailed me that there's some job opportunities with HealthSource in Marshall with land, working with Landon and Dr. Rob. And not just us. Like I said, like by the end of this year, there will be over 400 offices across the country. Yeah. Our, our CEO is like printing office and taking good chiropractic offices and getting them on page with us. He's not, oh, you know, make it doctors, um, but getting people um, on page with what we're doing and helping people. So it, check your hometown. You're going home for a holiday break. There's I, I, if you search health source, I bet you find one. Mm -hmm. Unless I shouldn't say I bet, but more than likely there's there's one around. So I'll tell you. So I emailed the Monday night class after he did that that there's job opportunities uh, to email me back and guess how many I got. Right, take advantage of the opportunities. That's why we bring guys like Landon in here to talk to you to get those opportunities. Absolutely. Hold on. Don't leave yet. Any other questions? All right, let's give him a round of applause. Yes, oh. <laughs> speaker reflection form. That's going to be your homework for today's class. Ooh. You can do it now, or you can not forget to do it by ten o'clock. So you've got four minutes before class is over. That's up to you. And if you don't hand it in by the time the Dropbox is done, that's that's your game. <clears throat> so do it now. Or go. Um, don't forget Monday night rehab, PTOT, speech language pathology, and athletic training. <laughs> I think you're bothering me to come see you again because he's like, you're seeing this in your staff.